won't cost you anything. Hallelujah. We're just going to ask that you throw your stuff in the trash when it's over, when you're finished eating. Do less cleanup that I have to do. And I will appreciate that. Hallelujah. I don't think there's any other announcements. You have a fellowship meeting uh, Friday, June the 12th. And that's going to be in a meet. We have uh, a youth night at my house on June the 19th at 7 o'clock. I'll get y'all other information soon on that. We have uh, outreach. is going to be June the 20th. From 10 to 12, remember we meet at the church at 9.30. We wear our yellow, our yellow outreach shirts, which I think mine's wearing. Barbecue chicken dinner fundraiser is going to be Saturday, June the 27th. $7 a plate. I hope to have your tickets. Maybe Sunday. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stephen, will you come and take up the offering for us? Lord, we thank you tonight, God, for your presence here, God. We ask you right now, Lord, that you would bless this offering, Lord, to further your kingdom and bless your people as they give. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You may be weary. You may be broken from the day. Something may have happened that tried to knock you off your feet. But my friend, Jesus is in the place. Amen. He's in the house. Yes. Right. And tonight, she's not just going to feel his presence, but she's going to be filled with his presence. And she's going to feel his mighty power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get Brother Joseph to come up, and as he comes up and gets ready to sing, I'm going to ask Sister Tina. She's from Holden. You may be seated. But I'm going to ask Sister Tina. I don't know how many of y'all are friends with her on Facebook. But she posted stuff that just blows my mind. She put a book here not too long ago on that she, she's taking this college class. When you like me, I just got to read and pray God gives me the knowledge. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she's read this book and she talked about how awesome it was and how much it made an impact on her life and so I ordered the book and I started reading it today and I'm expecting God to do great things through that book Amen Thank you Sister Tina stand if you will and give us a word I'm just thankful I'm thankful for Sister Tina and Amen. How many come to have church tonight? Amen. Come on, how many came to have church tonight?
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many wants God to baptize them over the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Come on. There's something that God's can't give you. There's something that's a website on the, on the TV can't give you, on the internet can't give you. Come on, somebody. Somebody, we need to have church in this place. Come on, somebody. I don't care if the devil wants to tell us to have church or not. I don't care if the demons in Washington don't want us to have church. I don't care if the demons in ministry don't want us to have church. Come on, this is an apostolic church. We need to act like this apostolic church.
man that he fulfills his word. Amen. That, uh, the Lord uh, still filling with the Holy Spirit. He's still Amen. changing people's lives. I'm just glad for it today. Amen. We're living in the best day and hour. This is the best day and hour. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. We're living in the best day and hour right now. He's coming back after a church without spot, without wrinkles. Yes. And I'm glad yes. the Lord. Who about you? Yes.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
Lord, praise the Lord. It's always a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. And I will say now that it is my privilege to bring Brother Cliff Gilpin. We go back a long way. There may have been a gap in between. We go back a long way. And uh, for those that, that was here last night, that's heard him preach, you know he is anointed of God. Amen. No surprise to what God can do. And as long as God is working through him, which I know he is, there's no surprise that he can do through the power of God tonight. Would you stand to your feet tonight? And let's give Brother Hilton a good hand clap tonight as he comes to the door. Let him preach to the Lord my heart tonight. Don't we do that one more time for the Lord. Fine folks. Amen. Amen. 
great people that they're with us tonight. I want to go to the Word of the Lord tonight, Jeremiah chapter 1, Romans chapter 8, and also Psalm 124. I do believe that God wants to set somebody free tonight. I do believe that God has purposed this service, and there's divine order in this place that God has set up to free someone from the bondage of sin or from the weight or whatever it is that's holding you back from what God wants you to be. I've come to preach to young people tonight, but I know this is going to be for more than just young people tonight. Amen. The Word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 1, God begins to speak to Jeremiah 1 and 5, and he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thy camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. And then Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, not just called, but are the called, called yeah. according to the purpose. Amen. I believe I'm the call. I believe you the call tonight in the right place. Psalm 124, 1 through 8 says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, this is one of my favorite passages. I get excited when I read it. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they swallowed us up quick. When the wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul, that the proud waters are going over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the flowers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our health is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Why don't you clap your hands and thank God because our health is not in here. Our health is nowhere else but in the name of the Lord tonight. That's where our health is. We are dead. We are sanctified by God tonight. We are the chosen people tonight. Amen. God bless you tonight. Turn around and shake your neighbor's hand and tell them how glad you are for them to be in service with you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The Word of God says very clearly in Jeremiah chapter 1 that God called him before he ever knew him. I don't believe that was just a word for Jeremiah tonight. I believe that was a word for God's people. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. God didn't just form you, but he called you to be a prophet. He called you to minister. He called you to reach this lost and dying world. God knew you before you ever took your first breath. God knew you before your, your mother ever conceived you in the womb. God knew exactly who you were tonight. I want you to know before we ever start this message out tonight that God knows exactly where you are. He knows everything about you. He knows everything you've ever done and everything you've ever said, every action you've ever completed, every action you have not completed, every thought, every intent, every inch of who you are. God already knows because God is the very one that formed you from your mother's womb. Praise God. Yes, Praise. Amen. I can, so let's get that straight before we get started here tonight. You are chosen by God. God yes. designed you specifically for a purpose tonight. Yes. Amen. Yes. I want to preach on the topic of a nightmare on the enemy street, if you'll allow me to. Yes. A nightmare on the enemy street. I can remember when I was a teenager. I can remember, and now for all of you who don't know, this is D.C. If you don't know what D.C. means, that means before Christ. I can remember sitting back and watching the Wes Craven novels on film of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And we used to get all scared to death because we didn't know when Freddy was going to show up with his claws next. We had no idea what was going to, who was going to die next in the film. And I know since that time that, that the scary movies have progressed and gotten a lot worse. But it was something about that fear inside me. And I, I, I 
wouldn't go to bed at night because I would watch this junk. And by the way, that's what it is. Let me go ahead and clarify that. So nobody here say, go to hell. Condone again. That's junk, by the way. Praise the Lord. But I would watch it. I would be scared to death to go to bed because I wouldn't want Freddie to get me. Amen. But I want you to know something tonight. That Freddie's not the problem tonight. Freddie's not the issue tonight. I want you to know that you are the devil's worst nightmare. Come on. Oh, yeah. You may not realize that when you wake up in the morning and you set your feet on the floor to start your morning, young person, to go to school, or you're out for school in the summer, and whatever you're doing that summer job you're going on, when those feet hit the floor when you wake up in the morning, it might just be another normal morning for you. You might get up and walk down the hall and begin to brush your teeth and get ready for whatever the day has for you, and it might seem like it's just some simple situation that I go through every morning. It's a routine. I do this every day. But what happens in hell when you wake up is when those feet hit the floor, there's a rumbling going on. The enemy says, oh no, another one of those blood ball young people have woken up this morning. They put their feet on the floor. They might tell somebody about Jesus today. They might lay hands on somebody and then get healed. Somebody might get the Holy Ghost from a young person who woke up. I want you to realize you are the enemy. Worst nightmare. You are the one that he's writing about when he said before you were ever formed. I knew you. God knew exactly who you were going to be and what you are today. You are the devil's worst nightmare. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, he doesn't want you to win. He doesn't want you to. He doesn't want you to succeed. In fact, God has a plan for your life. Just like He wrote about Jeremiah, He had a plan for Jeremiah. He has a plan for your life. But I want you to know the enemy also has a plan for your life. His plan is very simple. He wants to destroy you. He wants to take your life and tear it apart. Jesus looked at Simon Peter. He said, Simon, Simon, the devil has desired you that he may sift you as wheat. He don't want to just destroy you. He wants to make you like fine grain so that you'll never exist again. But there's a God in heaven who has your own steps ordered. He has preordained you. He has put you in this place to hear a preacher man in a cream colored suit, praise God, like one of the players said. Hallelujah. Tell you that there is no weapon that's formed against you that's going to prosper. God has a plan for your life. God wants to see every dream, every purpose, every vision that he's ever given you. He wants to see it come to pass. But the only thing stopping it from coming to pass tonight is you. The only thing that can hinder the work of God in your life is you because you are the devil's worst nightmare tonight. Amen. Oh yeah. Amen. See, the devil doesn't fight fair. He, he doesn't fight like you and I do. We want to fight one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, big old ugly giant in the middle of a valley. Begin to cry out. He said, sit me down, a man to fight. What he was saying was, I don't want to fight you on the mountaintop. We know the story. David got five smooth stones, and he went out in the valley, and he swung that stone, and he hit him right between the eyes, and he dropped that giant in his tracks. But that's how the enemy wants to fight you. He doesn't want you on a mountaintop. He wants to wait till you get in the valley. He doesn't want you leaving a red-hot revival because he knows something's going to happen. He wants to wait on Monday morning when everything's going wrong in your life, when everything's not working out. And old brother Hill, I just woke up this morning, I don't feel good. Yeah, but he understands. Even though you don't feel good, there's still a presence of God living inside you. And when your feet hit the floor, something bad can happen to his kingdom. So he fights you. You think it's just life sometimes. Don't get the enemy confused with life, and don't get life confused with the enemy. The enemy does not fight fair. He will not fight you in a one-on-one -on -one battle. He sits in darkness and shoots his darts according to the word of God from a distance. He tries to penetrate that helmet of salvation and get inside your thoughts. But I want you to know, you have the ability to fight the enemy. He's given us the armor of God. He's given us the weapon of the word of God. He's given us the shield of faith. He's put a helmet of salvation on us. We can't defeat the enemy, and we will defeat the enemy. He's already defeated. The time we got behind it, it belongs to the Lord. So I want you to see, he's not going to fight you fair. He knows he's already defeated, so you might as well just go ahead and tell him. I know, let me tell you like this. My future is already set. God has a plan for my life. He already knows his future is already set. He wants to keep bringing up your past. Bring up what you've done, but oh, way, oh, you over yonder, way on some of the time. You just look at 
him and say, hey, devil, let me let you know. My past is already set. God's washed it away, and my future's looking brighter. See, the, the past looks very dim when I look behind. But when I look ahead, I see the light coming out. I see God directing my footsteps. I see God setting in an order to do great things in my life. Praise God. Amen. The Lord wants to fight you fair. He knows he's no match for you. See, I'm no match for the devil by myself. I can't do it alone I, because he'll destroy me. I'm not going to lie to you tonight. But when I've got God on my side, when I understand all things are working together for the good that are be called, when I understand that God already knows my end from the beginning, God's already ordained my footsteps, God's already called me. You're sitting here, young person tonight, I want you to know that God has already called you. God has already ordered your footsteps. He knew who would be here under the sound of my voice to hear this message. You're not just some weak, anemic, poor little old Christian. You are God's chosen young person. God has ordained you. God has redeemed you. God has set your footsteps. Maybe you won't have the Holy Ghost yet tonight. God has you in the right place. God has His service divinely set up for the order for you to get delivered tonight so that you can walk in the newness of life. Praise Amen. God. Amen. See, what you need to understand tonight is you took the devil's place. Jesus said in Luke 10 and 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Well, what does that mean, Brother Hilton? That means I took his place. He doesn't want you to succeed because he was the worship angel. He was the praise angel. He was beautiful. He had eyes of sapphire. He had lungs that were like bad pipes. He performed the worship in heaven. And now that he's been cast out, I'm taking his place. I praise and I worship God. What does that mean? That means God reached down and formed a glorified mud ball. Come on. Take his yeah. place. Come on. I 
I'm going to be more blessed before than when I started. Amen? I'm going to be more blessed than when I started. I've got my mind made up. It doesn't matter what comes against me. It doesn't matter how, how bad I've got to fight the enemy. It doesn't matter. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning back. I'm not turning around. I've got my mind made up that I'm going to serve God because I'm in this for the Lord. I'm a winner. I'm not a quitter. Oh, 
step can get away from him because he's lost a step or two along the way. So he begins to open that big mouth and he begins to roar real loud and it freezes his prey right where it is. And he can pounce on him and attack him. I want you to understand that lion's teeth have begun to fall out. They begin to come apart. They begin to, to, to come loose. And so he doesn't have the bite he quite used to have. When you get older, these things begin to happen. And that lion is, is no longer as vicious as he, he can't move as fast. He can't attack like you do. So sometimes the prey gets away. What you need to understand tonight is the devil is as a roaring lion. Yes. A roaring lion is an older lion that's losing his step. He's losing his grip on humanity. He's losing his grip on, on his stronghold on people. He's losing his grip oh. on things. And so he has to scare you into thinking that he's bigger than he really is. He has to scare you to thinking that he's greater than he really is. I want to know that lion has lost his teeth because he was defamed at Calvary when Jesus shed his precious blood. And thank God for it because through that access I can touch the throne of God. And I have power over the enemy tonight. I have power over the throne of God tonight. He no longer can attack me. All he does is bark real loud and try to scare me. But I've got news for him. I'm not backing down. I'm not turning around. I'm not, I'm not giving up. I'm going to keep on worshiping. I'm going to keep on praising. I'm going to keep on telling people about Jesus. I'm going to keep on witnessing. I'm going to keep on turning my world upside down because I've made up my mind. He can roar all he wants. I'm not scared. I'm going to be his worst nightmare. Before that scripture in here it says, seeking whom he may devour. Talking about forfeited power. The word may is a permissive word. Right. Go to your mom and say, Mama, can I go to the store? Can means do whatever you want. My mom used to say, Can you go to the store? I said, Oh, I'm sorry. May I go to the store? Because may is a permissive word. The only way the enemy can attack you and hurt you is if you give him permission to. Amen. Wow. That's right. May the vow. You give him permission to do it. I'm talking to some young people tonight. If you ever recognize who you really are, if you ever understand who you really are in the kingdom of God, you would turn your town upside down. You would turn the known world that you live in upside down. I really don't think we get a glimpse of how powerful we are through the blood of Jesus, through the name of Jesus, and through the word of God, and having been filled with the Spirit. I really don't think we understand how great and mighty God is through us. We are a force to be reckoned with against the gates of hell. That's right. Amen. 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 In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 and 5, it says, For the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds. It goes on to talk about casting down the weapons of our Go on to verse 5. Casting down imaginations, every high thing to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity and every thought the obedience of Jesus Christ. Yes, right. amen. I want you to see in something tonight. He said, pulling down the strongholds. What's a stronghold tonight? Well, when I was younger, I used to, again, used to watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. And they had a stronghold that would get you in, that would put you in a headlock. And I'd be on the edge of my seat, four or five years old, watching wrestling. Get South Wrestling. See, I go way back. I got some, hey. I got y'all to get you down. Yeah, I'm the cat lad, the junkyard dog, yeah. Uh -huh. And they'd get that man I like. I like JYD. That was my wrestler. I love JYD. He used to come to the ring with a chain on his neck. Amen. He, he, they'd get him in the headlock, and I'd get all nervous. I didn't know it was fake back then. I didn't know it was real. I was just a kid. Come on. You, you laughing at me, but you knew no. it too. You, you didn't know it was real either. Praise God, you are doing fake either. You thought it was real. So he gets him in that headlock and he can't let go and he can't get out and he's it, struggling with it. That's a stronghold. Come on, yes. That's a stronghold. That's right. That's a headlock. That's the enemy putting you in that place. The enemy wants to put you in a stronghold. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. He wants to bind you and put you and a stronghold tonight. He wants to get you in a place to where you can't get free. You come to church and you say, Lord, 
Lord, I want to praise you. I want to worship you. You shake people's hand when you go down the aisle of the church. And he's got you in a stronghold. He's got you in a place you can't get loose. He's got you bound tonight. And the only thing that can set you... See, you're waiting on the preacher to set him free. I can't set you free. You're waiting on Brother Denver to get up and lay hands on him and set him free. He's bound. He can't get loose. Because he's got him in a stronghold. He's got him in a place that nobody can fix his situation but him. He's in a place. We come to church and you say, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. When really, he's being held down in a headlock. He's being bound by a stronghold. And all he wants to do is get free. But every time he comes to church, he goes to the motions. He praises. He worships. He seeks God. But the only thing that can really set him free is himself. The only thing that can get him out of that situation is himself. Understanding the power of God that's in him. I can lay hands on him all day long and I can pray for him. For the animal, you can lay hands on him all day long. For the steward, you can do it. For the player, you can come up here. But the only person that is a made up mind to the other person that says, I refuse to be found. I refuse to be in a headlock. I refuse to be in this situation. I refuse this and begin to cast him away and say, in the name of Jesus, I want to be set free. Somebody's life, if they'll just step out. These altars are open for who 
whosoever will, let them come and taste and see that God is good. Let them shake off that stronghold. Let them shake off that enemy. Let them shake off whatever it is on the back. Let them shake it off tonight. I'm not going to leave you around. I'm not going to leave you held back by the forces of hell. But I'm going to be hell's force right there. I'm going to be a nightmare on the enemy street. I'm going to be a
Praise the Lord. Satan is the role. 